Every salesperson's greatest fear, objections. They make us afraid, they make us nervous, they sometimes even prevent us from picking up the phone. So let's dive into not only what objections actually are, but how to handle them. Objections typically come in a couple different flavors, but the way that you handle them can follow a very similar framework. The types of objections that you would hear would be something like, I don't have time right now, or I'm not the right person. And so let's keep those in mind as we go into how do we think about solving it? Most people think that they solve it by just answering their thing. You don't have time? Well, when's a better time? But the problem with that is not having time is not really the problem. They're trying to say that because they want to come across nice or they fake something. And think about yourself. You've probably done that as well, where somebody does something and you don't want to tell them the real reason. Like if you go to a store and they're like, can I help you find something today? Most of us are like, no, 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 just looking. But you're not always just looking. You just don't want to be mean to that person. So getting to the truth of the objection is the way that great salespeople help solve it. What are some ideas to build that up? When we are handling or working with objections, what we like to teach is the double A method, which is answer and ask, or acknowledge and ask. We need to make sure that when we are facing an objection, a rejection, or a deflection, which we'll break down in a second, that we acknowledge it, but we always have to have what question we're going to ask next ready, because that's what keeps the conversation going. If all you do is answer it, or all you do is acknowledge it, but don't ask a question back, that's when the conversation ends. So being ready with the right question is actually the key to handling an objection. But what are the differences between objections, rejections, and deflections, Dan? Objections are the things that we gotta figure out if they're real or they're shallow. Like they're just saying it to say it, or it's an actual thing that they have. Deflections are something that they're kind of like, na na na, maybe later. And a rejection is typically something that you know it when you hear it. It's like, don't ever call me again. Like it's like emotionally charged and that has a completely different way of answering them than something that can be a little bit softer that may earn a few more seconds of going through it. How would you say that you would answer those three different? Objections tend to be specific about your product. So an objection be like, well, that won't work with our API or uh, we like to do things this way. That's an objection, which actually can be handled through acknowledging and asking. Deflections tend to be oftentimes what we get more often on like cold outreach. I'm too busy. I'm not interested. Why are you calling? All of those are deflections, right? They're just trying to move you along and being ready for those is key. And Dan nailed the rejection. We know it when we get rejected. But interestingly enough, we actually don't get rejected nearly as much as we fear it. We're afraid of rejection when in reality, we need to be better prepared for objections and deflections. The technique that I use for rejections is do something that breaks the cycle of how they typically would expect somebody to respond. When somebody rejects you, like, don't ever call me again, people kind of expect a fight with that type of response. Like, no, I'm going to call you or I'll call someone or I'll go around and that escalates it. But the best way to de-escalate it is validate what they're saying. In, in a way, it's acknowledging that they're asking you to do something and come across as human. I understand you're asking me to never call you again. I'm personally going to go in the CRM and mark you as do not contact. So not only I or anybody else on the team will contact you. If you do get contacted again, I'm gonna follow up with an email right after this not asking for anything, not asking you to do, but it's going to include my cell phone. And you can call or text me if for whatever reason that system doesn't work and I will personally handle it for you. You're not asking for anything. You're saying, I hear you, I'm going to solve it, and I'm going to take personal responsibility. What you'll be surprised is every now and then, once they've calmed down from whatever emotional challenges that happen, because it's not you, whatever that caused that response, it's not what you did. It's not how you said something. They're dealing with something in their life and you're coming across as empathetic and human. And once they see that email from you, they may be like, you know what? I was a little harsh. And that might earn you another conversation because you did it in a different way.